So my talk is going to be about um, Apple Pay. Um, uh, my name is Kian, by the way. I'm, um, I'm working for a company in Singapore right now. It's a uh, chat app for work at Pi. Um, this is uh, purely my hobby. I just uh, I had a chance to uh, get a hands-on Apple Pay because uh, I, I helped a friend build an app. Uh, he's in the US. So I got the uh, US credit card. And then um, I also switched to US App Store. And I find it's really, really um, fast to use Apple Pay. Like I don't want to enter any more credit card information ever in, uh, in any kind of app. Uh, so um, the, uh, it's a shopping app. I'll show you uh, in a minute. And um, uh, for, um, I also prepared some, uh, uh, I, I mirror my iPhone to, uh, to here. Because on my iPhone, I, I have a few apps that already accept in Apple Pay. And I think it's good for uh, someone that uh, haven't had a chance to uh, take a look. So um, um, a quick look about Apple Pay. It's introduced last year, 2014, uh, together with iPhone 6. And um, for Singapore, it's coming soon if, uh, if everything goes well. I think it's going to be the same time with the uh, uh, Apple Store in Orchard, I think. I think they will enable Apple Pay in-store. In but um, what we are talking about today is the Apple Pay in-apps, not the real device. Because I never try with the real device anyway. Um, also, another thing is the shopping category recently introduced in the App Store, which means they really want to expand this. It's a huge opportunity ahead for either app developers, you, you can have more projects with Apple Pay, or you are shop owners that have, um, you have stuff to sell, and you want to sell fast. Uh, so it's Apple Pay within apps. So it's not the everything Apple Pay today. Um, and um, why Shopify with Apple Pay? Because uh, so when I try, I, I realize there are a lot of things to do with you going to build a shopping back end. Because you have to worry about payment, uh, products, everything. And I think it's nowadays, it's not unless you're going to do a lot of sophisticated things for your back end. Otherwise, Shopify should be good enough. It's, uh, it's since 2004 already I'm from Canada. It's a shopping uh, back end as a service. That's from what my, my point of view. I think it's a back end as a service. And uh, around three months ago, they, they released an SDK for iOS app, which means it's very easy for iOS developers to integrate their um, Shopify back end if they already have the store for their web app and they want to enable the uh, uh, payment on the iPhone. Uh, this SDK uh, is going to simplify a lot of things. A few other things that is uh, much easier now to start uh, developing on Apple Pay. Uh, you cannot debug on, on, on Xcode. Previously, you need a real device, you need a real credit card. Your phone has to be the uh, iPhone 6 or above to use uh, to debug on Apple Pay. And um, from iOS 8.3 and above, um, the, uh, they, they introduced a class called PK Payment Button. It's a black button or the white button with the uh, black border, depends on the style so that you don't have to start a button yourself. Before that, from 8.0, basically when they, when they introduced the iPhone 6, you have to start a button yourself, which, um, which is uh, tedious, ridiculous. So if supporting Apple Pay, I think um, 8.3 and above. Uh, so let's dive into uh, it first. Before jumping to the code, let's have a look. This is one screenshot from uh, an app that uh, support Apple Pay. I think this one is um, fancy. So um, soon. I think even in Singapore App Store, you see apps starting to show two buttons instead of one. Um, one is the traditional buy button. The second one is going to be buy with Apple Pay. Basically, the app can uh, recognize whether your phone has the capability to support. They will show the second button. Otherwise, you go with the traditional shopping flow. And uh, this is from Apple Slide, but it's, uh, it's very short. But there are three things. It's easy, so no registration. Uh, you don't need a user account to buy stuff now. It's secure because um, your credit card number will never be sent to uh, the merchant. Uh, and it's private, of course. So uh, a few other screenshots. Uh, this one is from um, eBay, uh, yeah, uh, Best Buy. Best Buy has now. And you see that I, I've never logged in before. I have one item in the cart, and I, I can start checkout already. This one is a shop ticks. Um, they're all featured on the US App Store right now. Uh, this one is uh, 
uh, Live X, I L I F X is to buy a light bulbs. So you can see a lot of uh, product categories in uh, in the app store right now. And um, this is one screenshot for an app that I did recently. It's not, it's not released yet, um, but um, so if if there's one thing to get away from this talk is basically as a developer, um, what you need for your product for your payment screen is first you check if the product uh, the phone is eligible to use Apple Pay. If it's eligible, you present the payment sheet from Apple. Uh, the user will pay. You get a token. You pass the token back to your back end, and that's it. And uh, this, uh, we will dive into it more. What the back end will be. Uh, so there will be um, action. So this one, I'm trying. Uh, so I'm gonna attempt to put my touch ID. It's secure. So if I put a wrong touch ID, it won't proceed. And after a few times, the flow is um, it's gonna show the passcode. Your, your usual passcode, you can pay, pay with that. But then I, uh, I, I decided, okay, I used the, wrong, um, the right finger, then uh, done. After this, Apple's gonna send you a token, and then we send back the token to the back end. In this case, it's, it's Shopify. So you see, it's really fast. And okay, before jumping to the code, uh, this is a slide from Apple. Uh, but it's basically summari uh, summarize everything that you need to prepare if you're going to use Apple Pay. Uh, if you're familiar with in-app purchase, you know uh, StoreKit framework with the prefix SK. With Apple Pay, it's got to be PassKit, so every prefix got to be um, PK. You see in the class name later on. And with in-app purchase, all the payment is actually done by Apple already, so you don't have to do anything else. Apple will just tell you they make the purchase, then you can proceed to give them the content you want. But that's the difference. Um, in-app purchase is for something uh, uh, like in-app content, services, subscriptions, something basically you can't touch. Physical goods and services is what Apple pays for, which is so far you have to use um, maybe PayPal SDK, for example, to pay, which you have to redirect, you have to have deep link, jump back to the app. Now with Apple Pay, it's much easier. So we need to build our own. And uh, I'm not going to dive too much, but I will introduce four main classes you need to remember. Uh, first is because uh, you, need, you need a card before checkout. The class name is called Payment Summary Items. This are uh, very basic. It's like your product name, the amount, and a type. Then you're going to pass all of these. It's like you have a card. You're going to pass all of this into the card. And the last item is going to be the, uh, the final item that you use to charge the user. And there's one property that you just need to pay attention. Payment uh, summary items. You just need to add all of your uh, items into the cart. If you have only one product, you add one product. If it's an Uber app, it's only one charge. It's only one ride, so it's one item. And uh, this is the payment sheet you saw just now. The name is long, but when you present this, uh, Apple will take care of everything, including um, the user uh, contact, user cards, uh, billing addresses, everything. And we just need to get the callbacks of this controller and decide what to do next. And PK payment is the class that you get from Apple. So um, one thing to note here, even though the payment is completed, but if you decide not to proceed with the PK payment, the user's card will not be charged. And um, this is what you have to handle in your app flow, right? Sorry, so I'm going to run very quickly through this um, uh, line of code. This is basically to demonstrate how you should uh, construct your PK pay summary items and then add into the PK uh, payment request. So first, I have a subtotal amount. I have a discount. This is what is great about um, uh, what Apple is already preparing for you. Uh, they use NS decimal number. Um, uh, it's handled on the units and um, uh, decimal number, uh, overflow, everything is already handled. And then finally, you have your total amount uh, deducted from the subtotal and after discount. And you're going to set the total into your um, result. And this is the PK payment request. Summary items, subtotal, discount, and total. 
So no matter what you put before, the actual one is the last one. Um, so if we stop right here, um, sorry, if we stop right here, you're gonna start to think about how should my back end work with this when, when the front end already have the PK payment. The back end needs to support and do all kind of stuff with the Apple server, right? Um, so I think that that part is, is handled by a lot of merchants right now, including um, uh, Stripe, Braintree, Shopify, uh, Braintree is from uh, PayPal. Um, uh, but we have a look in Shopify today because Shopify all actually handles a lot of other stuff like um, uh, they have products, catalog for you, collections, everything, stock management, shipment as well. And this kind of stuff is very uh, complicated if you're gonna do your own backend. Um, and especially payment, they have a lot of kind of payment. So you have your PayPal account, you can put into your Shopify, money is gonna go to your PayPal account. And refund, they also have me refund mechanism, so you don't have to care about that. And they have um, Shopify apps, which um, allows you to build your own custom flow for a certain hook in the Shopify backend. Um, okay, so this is what it looks like if you uh, already have something support Apple Pay. Um, you are using the mobile by SDK integration. They give you a, an API key and a channel ID, which you use to initiate, initialize in your code with those keys. And merchant ID is what you're gonna create in the developer portal of uh, Apple. So this is unique. And um, uh, when you create that, uh, actually, uh, I'm gonna run through this quickly. Uh, this is done by Shopify. They give you this CSR file, create the merchant ID. We're gonna upload this CSR file to Apple, just like what you generate your distribution certificate. Exactly the same. And then um, after everything is done, you're gonna upload back to Shopify and then in your Xcode, you activate the Apple Pay capability, which will look like this. So if everything is done, it's gonna have a check mark with all the ticks here, if everything is configured correctly. Um, so with Shopify, um, it, they basically simplify a lot of classes from Apple and they have uh, they, their own callbacks for you so that it's very fast to implement. So you have a shop, you implement your shop, you have um, you have your own product. A variant is like a product has multiple colors, size. Um, and then when you, start, when you start your payment flow, you just need to initiate your cart, add your variant, whatever uh, the user has chosen, and uh, create a buy uh, checkout uh, object. And this is the main object that you interact with. You don't have to care whether, uh, how to use the uh, uh, context framework from Apple to extract all the addresses. They have, they, have, they have everything for you. You put a card in and then um, in your controller that do the payment, uh, you just need to inherit this class. Uh, and actually, they also have something called by product view controller, which will render everything from the back end. Then you don't have to do anything. But if you have your own custom UI, you inherit from this guy, and it has a method called, oops, I met a, this should be start Apple Pay checkout. And then uh, they give you a bunch of delegates, like fail, why it fails. Um, uh, fail to get shipping rates as well, like if you, your product doesn't ship to the US, it will go here, and then you can display a proper error prompt to the user. Uh, fail to complete the checkout is, could be due to uh, internet connection or also uh, missing information. And this is where it uh, succeeds, and you can show like the thank you uh, screen just now. Yeah, and then when, user, when the user dismiss the, the payment sheet, um, you have your, all the information from the user through the checkout object. Uh, so uh, there's one hook, uh, there's one thing interesting here, which is, um, I think it's better if I can demonstrate it. So you see the screen, right? Um, these are all the apps uh, I have right now to support Apple Pay. And um, let's dive into Fancy, for example. Um, so you choose this product. I'm not locked in at all. And if I choose buy with Apple Pay, this will prompt. 
and you can see here, basically here, I can change my shipping address. Um, like your app don't, doesn't have to care about all these things. You don't have to cache in your app or anything. It's already there. And you can change your um, phone number, contact email. If you want to ship it to your friend, it's always here. And basically, uh, pay with touch ID. Uh, maybe another one. Like I, I my cart already have one. So see, always two buttons. All of the apps in 2016 in Singapore, from what I predict, is gonna support two buttons. <laughs> Any questions so far? Uh, yeah, if you go to the App Store from the US, in the feature page, they have a section called um, buy with Apple Pay. When you go inside, there are a lot already. UK, US, and Canada yesterday just support Apple Pay. So basically, uh, everything. I think they're going to change the whole experience when you uh, pay on the iPhone. Um, I think that's it. Uh, after this is... Uh, yeah, a few uh, references. Basically, this is everything. If you want to know about Apple Pay, uh, this video has everything, including the, uh, um, the sample project from, uh, from Apple in 2015, uh, earlier this year. Uh, mobile by SDK, very new. Um, it's only version 2. Version 1 was beta. Uh, so they released this around two months ago, right the time when I started to do the app. And um, this is what you need to read if you want to enable Shopify, uh, uh, Apple Pay with Shopify. Yeah. And that's my Twitter handle uh, in case you want to contact. Yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, can you actually still use the share sheet for iOS, iPhone 6 below? Oh, uh, there is a method from uh, PK Payment Request, I think. It's a static method, say, is app, um, Apple Pay eligible? So if it doesn't support, you have to show the traditional UI. So I'm not sure if Apple's going to reject if your app doesn't support device don't have Apple Pay. But I, I don't think they, they will because they want people to buy new phones, right? So, so, so iPhone 5 open, uh, please use something else. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So payment sheet is com completely yeah, not since accessible? I, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I actually never try. <laughs> it's quite, quite strange if you could, if you could pay, if you could authenticate with your phone's PIN number, yeah. you cannot use a Firefox to buy it. I think it has something to do with the chip, the <laughs> encryption chip. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's when they encrypt the card information. So, you got the question? Oh. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks guys.